Saturday, or at least on my part of the world, <laughs> it is the end of Shabbat. It is Saturday, and it's 8 p.m. here, and um, I'm so grateful for this day and everything the Lord allowed, being able to spend time with family and just laugh and have fun and, and good friends, new friends. <laughs> so God has been so, been so gracious. I just can't tell it all. I won't tell it all because um, that's not what we're here for. <laughs> Maybe somewhere else on a different day. But um, thank you so much for joining us here. Welcome to Oil for the Journey. We are on day 25 of our 40-day journey, y'all. And it has been absolutely amazing. God has been just sharing his word over and over again, even as we reread through the same scriptures. Lord, he's he's just been um he's been pointing out new things. And I'm just so grateful to be able to get more understanding, to be able to draw closer to him, to see his heart, right? To see Father God's heart. And I pray that those same things and even more have been happening for you that as you are seeking answers, seeking clarity, seeking direction that the Lord has been speaking to you through his word. So um, I just want to remind you that we are, this 40-day journey is called Life and by God's Word, where we are choosing um, to, to set him first. So let's look at our definition again, like we do, we try to do every day. <laughs> When I remember, this is keeping 100, keep it 100. <laughs> it's when I remember. All right. So when we talk about life and these are daily life encounters that require us to expend massive amounts of energy, whether we judge an experience to be good or bad, that life experience requires us to spend ourselves emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, intellectually, and socially. And so when we are life and by God's word, we choose to trust God and his holy word to lead, guide, direct, redirect, influence, and encourage our daily lived experiences, whether they be good or bad. Because to be near God is for our good. He is absolutely trustworthy, y'all. You know, just thankful to God for all he does and, um, you know, the connections he's made. So I want to invite you all, if you would like to join me, I would love to have you here with me live on this journey, just to be able to talk through God's word, encourage one another, and to pray together. So if you want to do that, you can scan this QR code. Uh, you'll receive the form, fill it out, and then we'll send you a link to connect with, with us on any given day. So just to remind you all, we are reading today 1 Samuel chapters 13, 14, and 15. We're continuing on our journey, we've been introduced right to Israel's first king, Saul, that the people begged God for. <laughs> so we begin this journey into his life and seeing his trans transition and how he chose to grow 
as a king, right? So we follow the Bridges for Peace Ignite the Truth Bible reading plan. Sign up at ignitethetruth.com. I'm telling you, your life will never be the same if you choose to accept God's invitation to join him on this amazing journey called life. I know so many of us, we plan out our lives and or our lives are planned for us, right? We're told this is what we should be doing by this age and yada, yada, yada. <laughs> you know, this is not the telephone commercial. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, I, I know that God's plans for us exceed even our own, his thoughts and his imaginations, his dreams. His, he's the creator of us all. And so he can always do exceedingly abundant, far above all that we could think or imagine. So I want to encourage you and invite you to trust him more, even as we are going through his word. And so also, if you would like to connect with us, we'd love to have you with us, whether you wanted to be a journey reader, or if you would just like to ask us to pray for you or with you. Um, if you want to seek a Bible believing church or a, get connected to a Bible study somewhere, um, we would love to assist you in doing that. So you can contact us at e email us at oil for the journey at gmail.com or any one of our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and here at YouTube. So, okay. So let's go ahead and um, pray. This, that's what we do. That's, that's it. That's awesome. <laughs> so Father God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you that your goodness, uh, your mercy endures forever. Thank you, Lord, that this is the day you've created, Lord. You're allowing us to be part of it, and we just love you for it. Father, I pray, uh, I thank you for your grace and your mercy that's new every day upon each and every person, Lord, that is joining us on this journey, whether they're watching us live or catching the archive, I just thank you, Lord, that you are encouraging their hearts, that you are inspiring them with hope, that they are being restored. Uh, the joy of you is being restored to them and that they are connecting with other believers, that community is being built. Lord, where community, where we are um, being encouraged and we're being corrected. Because when it's all done in love, <laughs> it all um, ends up being to life, to you, because you are life. You are our life. And so we thank you for this moment in your word. Bless the reading of your word. Bless the hearers. And bless those who will do, God, in all of our understanding, and all of our getting, help us to get understanding and teach us how to apply your word, Father. We pray for this even now in the name of Jesus that you will have your way, God. Lord, we thank you that you will be glorified in every situation. <sighs> that all things that you cause, all things to work together for good, to them who love you, to them who are called according to your purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, fam. Okay, here we are. First, um, I'm reading um, <laughs> from the New Living Translation. So just as a friendly reminder, and here we are, 1 Samuel 13, okay? Saul was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned for 42 years. Ooh, okay, Saul. <laughs> Saul selected 3,000 special troops from the army of Israel and sent the rest of the men home. He took 2,000 of the chosen men with him to Michmash and the hill country of Bethel. The other thousand went with Saul's son, Jonathan, 
to Gibeah in the land of Benjamin. Soon after this, Jonathan attacked and defeated the garrison at Philistines of Philistines at Geba. The news spread quickly among the Philistines. So Saul blew the ram's horn throughout the land saying, Hebrews, hear this, rise up in revolt. All Israel heard the news that Saul had destroyed the Philistine garrison at Geba and that the Philistines now hated the Israelites more than ever. So the entire Israelite army was summoned to join Saul at Gilgal. The Philistines mustered a mighty army of 3,000 chariots, 6,000 charioteers, and as many warriors as the grains of sand on the seashore. They camped at Michmash, east of Beth Avon. The men of Israel saw what a tight spot they were in, and because they were hard pressed by the enemy, they tried to hide in caves thickets, rocks, holes, and cisterns. Some of them crossed the Jordan River and escaped into the land of Gad and Gilead. Meanwhile, Saul stayed at Gilgal, and his men were trembling with fear. Saul waited there seven days for Samuel as Samuel had instructed him earlier, but Samuel still didn't come. Saul realized that his troops were rapidly slipping away, so he demanded Bring me the burnt offering and the peace offerings. And Saul sacrificed the burnt offering himself. Just as Saul was finishing with the burnt offering, Samuel arrived. Saul went out to meet and welcome him. But Samuel said, what is this you have done? Saul replied, I saw my men scattering from me and you didn't arrive when you said you would. And the Philistines are at Michmash ready for battle. So I said, the Philistines are ready to march against us at Gilgal. And I haven't even asked the Lord, asked for the Lord's help. So I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering myself before you came. Mm. How foolish, (laughs) that's all Samuel exclaimed. You have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. Had you kept it, the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom must end. For the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. The Lord has already appointed him to be the leader of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. Wow. Samuel then left Gilgal and went on his way. But the rest of the troops went with Saul to meet the army. They went up from Gilgal to Gibeah in the land of Benjamin. When Saul counted the men who were still with him, he found only 600 were left. Saul and Jonathan and the troops with them were staying at Gibeah in the land of Benjamin. The Philistines set up their camp at Michmash. Three raiding parties soon left the camp of the Philistines. One went north towards Ophrah in the land of Shual. Another went west to Beth Horan, and the third moved toward the border above the valley of Zeboim near the wilderness. There were no blacksmiths in the land of Israel in those days. The Philistines wouldn't allow them for fear they would make swords and spears for the Hebrews. Wow, look at that. (laughs) So whenever the Israelites needed to sharpen their plowshares, picks, axes, or sickles, they had to take them to to a Philistine blacksmith. The charges were as follows, a quarter of an ounce of silver for sharpening a plowshare or a pick, and an eighth of an ounce for sharpening an axe or making the point of an ox goad. So on the day of the battle, none of the people of Israel had a sword or spear except for Saul and Jonathan. Hmm. The pass at Michmash had had meanwhile been secured by a contingent of the Philistine army. For Samuel 14. One day Jonathan said to his armor bearer, come on, let's go over to where the Philistines have their outpost. But Jonathan did not tell his father what he was doing. Meanwhile, Saul and his 600 men were camped on the outskirts of Gibeah around the pomegranate tree at Migron. Among Saul's men was Ahijah the priest who was wearing the ephod, the priestly vest. Ahijah was the son of Ichabod's brother Ahitub, son of Phinehas, son of Eli, the priest of the Lord, 
who had served at Shiloh. No one realized that Jonathan had left the Israelite camp. To reach the Philistine outpost, Jonathan had to go down between two rocky cliffs that were called Bozes and Sena. The cliff on the north was in front of Michmash, and one on the south was in front of Geba. Let's go across to the outpost of those pagans, Jonathan said to his armor bearer. Perhaps the Lord will help us, for nothing can hinder the Lord. He can win a battle whether he has many warriors or a few. Do what you think is best, the armor bearer replied. I'm with you completely, whatever you decide. All right, then, Jonathan told him, we'll cross over and let them see us. If they say to us, stay where you are or we'll kill you, then we will stop and not go up to them. But if they say, come on up and fight, then we will go up. That will be the Lord's sign that he will help us defeat them. When the Philistines saw them coming, they shouted, look, the Hebrews are crawling out of their holes. Then the men, the men from the outpost shouted to Jonathan, come up here, come, up, come on up here and we'll teach you a lesson. <laughs> come on and climb right behind me, Jonathan said to his armor bearer, for the Lord will help us defeat them. So the, the so they climbed up using both hands and feet, and the Philistines fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer killed those who came behind them. They killed some 20 men in all, and their bodies were scattered over about half an acre. Suddenly, panic broke out in the Philistine army, both in the camp and in the field, including even the outposts and raiding parties. And just then, an earthquake struck and everyone was terrified. Wow. <laughs> That's the first time I noticed that. Saul's lookouts in Gibeah of Benjamin saw a strange sight. The vast army of Philistines began to melt away in every direction. Call the roll and find out who's missing, Saul ordered. And when they checked, they, fall, they found that Jonathan and his armor bearer were gone. Then Saul shouted to Ahijah, bring the ephod here. For at that time, Ahijah was wearing the ephod in front of the Israelites. But while Saul was talking to the priest, the confusion in the Philistine camp grew louder and louder. So Saul said to the priest, never mind, let's get going. Then Saul and all his men rushed out to the battle and found the Philistines killing each other. There was terrible confusion everywhere. Even the Hebrews, who had previously gone over to the Philistine army, revolted and joined in with Saul. Wow, look at that. Jonathan and the rest of the Israelites. Likewise, the men of Israel who were hiding in the hill country of Ephraim joined the chase when they saw the Philistines running away. So the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle continued to rage even beyond Beth Aven. Now the men of Israel were pressed to exhaustion that day because Saul had placed them under an oath, saying, let a curse fall on anyone who eats before evening, before I have full revenge on my enemies. So no one ate anything all day. That wasn't Jesus. Even though they had all found honeycomb on the ground in the forest, they didn't dare touch the honey because they all feared the oath they had taken. But Jonathan had not heard his father's command and he dipped the end of his stick into a piece of honeycomb and ate the honey. After he had eaten it, he felt refreshed. But one of the men saw him and said, your father made the army take a strict oath that anyone who eats food today will be cursed. That is why everyone is weary and faint. My father has made trouble for us all, Jonathan exclaimed. A command like that only hurts us. See how refreshed I am now that I have eaten this little bit of honey? If the men had been allowed to eat freely from the food they found among our enemies, think how many more Philistines we could have killed. They chased and killed the Philistines all day from Michmash to Ajalon, growing more and more faint. That evening, they rushed for the battle, plunder and butchered the sheep, goats, cattle and calves. But they ate them without draining the blood. 
Someone reported to Saul, look, the men are sinning against the Lord by eating meat that still has blood in it. That is very wrong, Saul said. Find a large stone and roll it over here. Then go out among the troops and tell them, bring the cattle, sheep, and goats here to me. Kill them here and drain the blood before you eat them. Do not sin against the Lord by eating meat with the blood still in it. So that night, all the troops brought their animals and slaughtered them there. Then Saul built an altar to the Lord. It was the first of the altars he built to the Lord. Hmm. Then Saul said, let's chase the Philistines all night and plunder them until sunrise. Let's destroy every last one of them. His men replied, we'll do whatever you think is best. But the priest said, let's ask God first. So Saul asked God, should we go after the Philistines? Will you help us defeat them? But God made no reply that day. Then Saul said to the leaders, something's wrong. <laughs> I want all my army commanders to come here. We must find out what sin was committed today. I vow by the name of the Lord who rescued Israel that the sinner will surely die, even if it is my own son, Jonathan. But no one would tell him what the trouble was. Then Saul said, Jonathan and I will stand over here and all of you stand over there. And the people responded to Saul, whatever you think is best. Then Saul prayed, O Lord, God of Israel, please show us who is guilty and who is innocent. They, then they cast sacred lots and Jonathan and Saul were chosen as the guilty ones and the people were declared innocent. Oof. Then Saul said, now cast lots again and choose between me and Jonathan. And Jonathan was shown to be the guilty one. Tell me what you have done, Saul, demanded of Jonathan. I tasted a little honey, Jonathan admitted. It was only a little bit on the end of my stick. Does that deserve death? Yes, Jonathan, Saul said, you must die. May God strike me and even kill me if you do not die for this. But the people broke in and said to Saul, Jonathan has won this great victory for Israel. Should he die? Far from it, as surely as the Lord lives, not one hair on his head will be touched. For God helped him do a great deed today. So the people rescued Jonathan, and he was not put to death. Then Saul called back the army from chasing the Philistines, and the Philistines returned home. Now when Saul had secured his grasp on Israel's throne, he fought against his enemies in every direction, against Moab, Ammon, Edom and the kings of Zobah and the Philistines and wherever he turned he was victorious. He performed great deeds and conquered the Amalekites saving Israel from all those who had plundered them. Saul's sons included Jonathan, Ishbosheth, and Malkishua. He also had two daughters Merab who was older and Michal. Saul's wife was Ahinoam Ahinoam and the daughter, the daughter of Hamas. The commander of Saul's army was Abner, the son of Saul's uncle Nair. Saul's father, Kish, and Abner's father, Nair, were both sons of Abiel. The Israelites fought constantly with the Philistines throughout Saul's lifetime. So whenever Saul observed a young man who was brave and strong, he drafted him into the army. 1 Samuel 15. One day, Samuel said to Saul, it was the Lord who told me to anoint you as king of his people, Israel. Now listen to this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies has declared. I have decided to settle accounts with the nation of Amalek for opposing Israel when they came from Egypt. Now go and completely destroy the entire Amalekite nation. Men, women, children, babies, cattle, sheep, goats, camels, and donkeys. So Saul mobilized his army at Telaim. There were 200,000 soldiers from Israel and 10,000 men from Judah. Then Saul and his army went to a town of the Amalekites and lay in wait in the morning. Saul sent this warning to the Kenites, move away from where the Amalekites live or you will die with them. 
for you showed kindness to all the people of Israel when they came up from Egypt. So the Kenites packed up and left. Then Saul slaughtered the Amalekites from Havilah all the way to Shur, east of Egypt. He captured Agag, the Amalekite king, but completely destroyed everyone else. So Saul and his men spared Agag's life and kept the best of the sheep and goats, the cattle, the fat calves, and the lambs, everything, in fact, that appealed to them. They destroyed only what was worthless or of poor quality. Then the Lord said to Samuel, I am sorry that I ever made Saul king, for he has not been loyal to me and he has refused to obey my command. Samuel was so deeply moved when he heard this that he cried out to the Lord all night. Early the next morning, Samuel went to find Saul. Someone told him Saul went to the town of Carmel to set up a monument to himself. Then he went on to Gilgal. No comment. <laughs> When Samuel finally found him, Saul greeted him cheerfully. May the Lord bless you, he said. I have carried out the Lord's command. Then what is all the bleeding of sheep and goats and the lowing of cattle, I hear, Samuel demanded. It's true that the army spared the best of the sheep, goats, and cattle, Saul admitted. But they are going to sacrifice them to the Lord your God. We have destroyed everything else. Then Samuel said to Saul, stop, listen to what the Lord told me last night. What did he tell you? Saul asked. And Samuel told him, although you may think little of yourself, are you not the leader of the tribes of Israel? The Lord has anointed you king of Israel and the Lord sent you on a mission and told you go and completely destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, until they are all dead. Why haven't you obeyed the Lord? Why did you rush for the plunder and do what was evil in the Lord's sight? But I did obey the Lord, Saul insisted. I carried out the mission he gave me. I brought back King Agag and I destroyed everyone else. Then my troops brought in the best of the sheep, goats, cattle, and plunder to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. But Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice and submission is better than offering the fat of rams. Rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft and stubbornness as bad as worshiping idols. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Then Saul admitted to Samuel, yes, I have sinned. I have disobeyed your instructions and the Lord's command for I was afraid of the people and did what they demanded. But now please forgive my sin and come back with me so that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel replied, I will not go back with you. Since you have rejected the Lord's command, he has rejected you as king. As Samuel turned to go, Saul tried to hold him back and tore the hem of his robe. And Samuel said to him, the Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to someone else, one who is better than you. And he who is the glory of Israel will not lie, nor will he change his mind. For he is not human that he should change his mind. Then Paul, then Saul, oops, sorry y'all, then Saul pleaded again, I know I have sinned, but please at least honor me before the elders of my people and before Israel before by coming back with me so that I may worship the Lord your God. So Samuel finally agreed and went back with him and Saul worshiped the Lord. Then Samuel said, bring King Agag to me. Agag arrived full of hope, for he thought, surely the worst is over and I have been spared. But Samuel said, as your sword has killed the sons of many mothers, now your mother will be childless. 
Samuel cut Agag to pieces before the Lord at Gilgal. Then Samuel went home to Ramah, and Saul returned to his house at Gibeah of Saul. Samuel never went to meet with Saul again, but he mourned constantly for him. And the Lord was sorry he had ever made Saul king of Israel. Woo, that's a deep book, y'all. <laughs> Chapters. Samuel was, he was a bad boy. Like, he was beast mode. He was amazing. Like, he cut up a gag. That's just deep to me. Y'all, they were warriors. <sighs> mm. Obedience is better than sacrifice. It is. Even when we think we're doing good. No sacrifice will ever cover or take the place of just being obedient. I'm going to let that sit there. I think that's all I need to say. I encourage you all to go back again and reread it, replay this archive and let us read with you. It is story time. It is better with friends. May your hearts be encouraged in the name of Jesus as you continue to obey God. That is how you show your love for him. That is how we show our love for him when we obey him more than sacrificing. Whatever you are someone's asking you to do that is contrary to what God has spoken, whether it's, you know, helping them, giving them this, that, or the other. Please, please, please obey God. <sighs> That's just as much for me as it is for y'all. You know, none of us are exempt from obeying God every day. We've not made it. You know, we're not um, perfect. It's a daily choice to obey God. Because just as quickly as God chose and, and made Saul king, the kingdom was ripped from him because of his disobedience. And that's all I'm going to say. All right. Be encouraged, fam. God does love you with an everlasting love. And I pray that your hearts are compelled to obey him out of love. And that's how you show your love. It's not form or fashion, but it is a willing choice to say, I do love you. Because I love you, I want to do this. I get to do this. Okay, well, thank you all for joining us again here at uh, Oil for the Journey. And we're so grateful for your, your, um, for your community, for gathering together, for your love, for your prayers. Keep praying for us as we are praying for you. And uh, remember that the Lord loves you. We'll be back again tomorrow at 12 p.m. every day until uh, Easter, y'all. We can celebrate his resurrection together. All right. I love you guys with the love of the Lord. Have an amazing day. And I pray that your Shabbat was wonderful. All right. Talk to you later. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you.